And to the last part. The last part, the shield. Um, you can see, the same as I did on the shoulder, um, I also scraped the sides here a little with the with the exacto knife mm -hmm. and did some small uh, scratches on the surface as well. Yeah. I also painted the the inner part here inside off cam. Mm. Uh, it's not really visible, so I uh, painted more the the top part. In the middle, I just added some little scratches and a little very very uh, um, subtle highlight yeah. in the middle. But the front will catch a lot, lot more light and a lot more attention, so we will focus on that. Mm -hmm. um, we will first start to do the um, blue painted surface as it's underlying, and uh, this way we can just easily paint the highlights uh, on those elements afterwards. Yeah. We will again start with a mix from the model air blue, some black. white now we have to make sure that we have our figure close by so we can check if the blue is right because I have to remix that already dried off Always check with the. That. Yeah, I want to make sure, and that's that's why Ben actually has the miniature right next to it, so you can make sure that the, the colors match. Yeah, it's not nothing is more annoying than a different blue all of a sudden. <laughs> that's true. A slight variation is not not really bad, but uh, having it really off is could be very annoying. We'll start with the generous layer of blue. As you can see, Ben is not concerned about overpainting here at this point. Okay, and second layer. Yeah, after some quick uh, hair drying or hair blowing action. Blow drying, jeez. <laughs> Maybe this is the woman, yeah? Uh, hair drying. Brain. Yeah, <laughs> hair drying, blowing. <laughs> Brain. And you really want to give it a second layer. And again, you, you'll see one thing. Um, it's better to use two thin layers than just one too thick. Um, many, many, many beginning painters that don't uh, do dilution at all, um, that uh, just paint off a tile, for example, oftentimes have the paint too thick. Um, maybe sometimes they don't, don't dilute it with water at all. I've been there, so <laughs> not blaming anyone. But um, if you really want a smooth result, um, do two or three layers. Uh, that's going to be cool. You should see how fast the paint is drying here, even without the yeah, yeah. hair Maybe. blower. Hair dry. Hair dry. <laughs> what is that thing? <laughs> blow, blow dryer. Blow dryer. Sheesh. <laughs> Well, I have no hair, so how, how should I know? <laughs> good, good excuse. Um, so I wanted to to show you um, how to wet blend on a surface like that because it's quite a nice large surface. Um, I don't want this to end up looking too much like non-metal, so I'm not going for a full strong contrast from white to the dark blue, but uh, from a lighter blue to a darker blue to the sides. Mm -hmm. um, I have to mix a lighter version of the, the base color on the palette. Yeah, and again, uh, checking it. Yeah, it might be a bit too bright, actually. Mm 
Oh, that's better. Right, so I will first blend to one side and then to the other mm -hmm. to make it more easy and also to have the color workable at all time while I do the blending. Um, I'll put some of the base color um, as a thin film on the surface. So this is this is basically classical wet and wet, what you would be seeing now. A little tricky on a large surface with this temperature, but Ben will be able to do it. And highlight color. And while both colors are still wet, I can mix them on the surface into another. A little bit brighter. You can even combine this wet and wet with a, um, and I think you even did that with a loaded brush, right? Um, was there still base color in the back or was there none? Uh, I think there was water in the back of the brush. Ah, okay. yeah. yeah. We now have a nice, nice transition. Actually, it's quite subtle, but uh, yeah. you can see it compared to the other side. Um, and we'll do the same on the other side. And then decide maybe we need to go a bit brighter still. So. so base color. So this area is wet now. And highlight color. Okay, still wet here, and I'll just use that stage to go a bit brighter here. Yeah, yeah, you can all see that really subtle blending there, and again, that's something that's just very, very quick. Yeah, I think uh, now we will add the, the weathering. Mm -hmm. and that should look awesome. Right. Just... So let me think, you're going to put some tank brown to the sides? Um, yeah, but just later first I will do the scratches on okay. the tank brown. Uh, because that way I have um, also the tank brown later on overlapping the scratches and the highlights. Ah, okay. So they're not the same brightness everywhere yeah. as well. Very clever. You can see uh, I need to definitely put some uh, of that dark color here where I scratched the surface. This way I get a nice little weathered edge. Yeah. And you can see what Ben said earlier with the exacto knife, uh, not just kind of scratching it, but really jamming in there and bending up some of the plastic uh, to create a little surface texture and um, like a little 3D effect there. Something that you can see in a couple of pieces there. and. Uh, also, if you're doing something really different, like painting tanks, for example, that's that's really a cool technique to do. Yeah. We'll also use the same color to outline the the elements in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something we call uh, dark lining. We don't call it black lining anymore because we don't want to use black for this. <laughs> yeah, black could look a little too harsh. Yeah. So using a very dark color that is not black looks 
most times a lot better. It has to be thin as well. I mean, uh, recently we had those uh, Rackham auctions, <laughs> and especially the first edition ones, uh, they all had black lining. And uh, I mean, that was the technique of the time, I guess. But it kind of looks horrible. So we now know better. All right, so everything is uh, outlined and dark lined and scratched. <laughs> yeah. So now for some highlights. I'm not trying to be kept an obvious right now, but uh, those highlights of, uh, of course go where light is being caught. That means on all of those kind of bent up areas on the top side and on the scratches in the material on the lower side of the dark line. There's nothing worse than a shield where somebody puts the highlights on the top line. Just <laughs> <laughs> seen it, it's not good. And scratches is also something you can easily overdo, so you want to be a little cautious. Um, so in the next step, um, I will re-emphasize some of that uh, red-brown in the, in the scratches by but just put, putting some some of it on the on the top side to make it look as if uh, rust would accumulate there but uh, you can see here yeah it's very thin very, very dilute. These little, I wouldn't call them rust stains yet because they're not that, uh, not, not that obvious. But these little variations in uh, color, because this um, brown has a very strong red component as well, um, just kind of creates extra interest in this area, little variation in the color and so on. And that's what you find a lot in, in really high level miniatures, that you'll see all kinds of colors you don't expect uh, somewhere. I'm just painting some streaks here. A little bit like leaking rust or something. Yeah. Okay, and strongly diluted tank brown to the sides. There we go, finally. <laughs> In the brush and feather it out to the middle. So this part is pretty important. So you, you put down the tank brown and then just with water it goes over that border again and pulls it out towards a little bit towards the middle um, so that there's really no chance of any kind of coffee stain pigments there. Okay, uh, now again, as we did on the shoulder pad, a bit more uh, orange rust or dirt uh, with some of the um, scruffy brown and some tank brown. These little effects, this little streaking things and so on, 
are very, very easy and they add so much to a miniature. This also tells the story a little bit. That's like that uh, Sigmarine is not fresh out of the factory. <laughs> I guess that's not where they come from. But <laughs> I haven't read up on the fluff yet, so please don't give my ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I think the uh, I, w I, I would leave it like that mm -hmm. regarding the the blue part, and continue with the with the non metal parts. Yeah. So what's the plan there? The plan is golden hammer, silver flashes, or no, um, silver hammerhead. Mm -hmm. Um. Golden, golden arrows. This part here, golden. The uh, shaft, maybe golden as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe silver. I'm not sure. But I want the hammerhead to be uh, metal, same okay. as hammer. Yeah. All right. So. Yeah, basically, it's the same as. Um, it's actually easier than the hammer because we don't have that many surfaces. Yeah, but it's flatter and smaller as well. So might be a little bit the same but we have to just uh, take the same things in account as we did with while painting the hammer what do you mean smaller like on my monitor that thing is huge <laughs> <laughs> and that's always something to realize guys like, if you're watching this on your 60 inch at home um yeah this is a miniature this thing is not like a meter across i guess we need a pretty strong contrast on that hammer now because otherwise it's going to be a little too too blue too similar to the blue yeah. right yeah some white here on the tip to get the strong highlights on the top. And a light blue here. Does it also have like a little light curve? Um, like the hammer, or is it? Is it yeah, 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 it's it's the very same curve. That's oh, why, okay. why yeah, I, I, could, I couldn't see it. Sorry. Yeah, but that's why I also wanted to paint it in uh, in silver. In silver, yeah. so yeah, because gotcha. it's the very same shape. If you just practice this little thing that Ben just does. Um, putting the white down, which looks in the first instance was horrible because it's just way too big and very, very bright, and then just uses intermediate tone while the still paint is still a little wet, it doesn't even have to be, um, to soften out the sides. And if you have problems with your brush control here, uh, you can also just stipple it. Um, stippling is actually very, very, very simple technique. Maybe I does the same right now. Um, and you'll get the same result. Little practice, right consistency of paint is important. Yeah. Well, this is all about contrast. That's uh, that's so important. And to increase the contrast, uh, some tank brown. And again, note the direction of the brush that uh, Ben is pushing down these pigments to the bottom. That's why he wants them. A light blue to get some highlight here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for for the. Uh, Hammerhead, I'm very happy like that. I uh, wouldn't, uh, I think I wouldn't put any highlights on there. Maybe um, again a tiny scratch in the end, but I will see that once the gold is in place. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the we have to adjust the overall contrast once the gold is there. Yeah. All right. All right. So you've seen a lot of gold already. Yep. Um, but this element here is also quite nice because uh, it's actually. Pretty pretty nice shaped with the the arrow here. 
with the technique we've shown you uh, so far with the gold, um, it's, I mean, there's a lot of things to consider. Um, mostly it's the direction of light and the, where to place the reflexes. Um, now, of course, if you follow this uh, painting video along, which is uh, what we basically always uh, encourage you to do, because that's where you can learn a lot, you don't really have to think about the placement because uh, Ben will show you where to place it. Um, but if you're uh, in question sometimes, like how certain things uh, should look, um, Google uh, golden items um, of a similar shape, for example, uh, and see how, how it looks there. Yeah, also you can take a look at uh, other people's miniatures, uh, either with a nice non-metal or even with a, with a real metal, mm -hmm. and just study their reflections. Yeah. Um, so if I have the tiny highlight in there, which there is a little raised border. You can see how the highlight usually looks a little too large when Ben places it and then he goes right straight back in with the next color to soften it out and make it a little smaller in the process. Alright, so for the next uh, highlights we have to decide uh, or remember actually the, um, the direction from the light. He will have the shield a bit like that mm -hmm. with the light source from here. That's why I painted the, the light reflex here on that side. So all these raised areas like this here, this, 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 they mm -hmm. will catch more light and will be quite a bit brighter. Yeah, the ones pointing left basically. Yeah, and the, these here because this is uh, like a little facet. Ah, okay, because it's uh, from the top also as well. Yeah. Maybe we use the side of the brush to pull it here over, over the side to get a somewhat straight line. Yeah. Okay, and again with a bit more white. And you can see how it's all about the contrast, like all of a sudden it looks like gold, just that little piece there. Okay, and the outer edge here. You can see how easy it is to create a smooth gradient, even on a small surface like that, by starting with the, the highlight actually and then stepping it down to wherever you want to go. Also again, uh, we mentioned this earlier with um, non-metallic metals, uh, you put the highlight on the bottom usually, not of course there's exceptions, but uh, this area for example, because that makes it metal for the eye. The brain goes like, all right, that's weird, it's got to be metal. You said the same as here, Ben, uh, even though this is not like the uh, very strong highlight color, but how it places this more to the bottom side of that transition. Yeah, I wanted to, to keep it uh, a bit darker than yes. this side due to the light. Yeah, source. it doesn't catch all of the light. Yeah. Okay, just a bit brighter here on the on the very edge. <laughs> mm hmm. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. And the thing is, guys, with a little practice you can do the same thing. It's not, I mean, the whole shield so far is not, is not rocket science. It takes a little practice, uh, but even something like this NMM Gold is something you can definitely achieve. Just try it. 
Right, the next part will be uh, gold again, mm -hmm. the, the upper rim here. Um, again, starting with the base color. Okay, for the gold, um, I need more contrast than, uh, yes, than we have on the blue. And we will have a bright highlight here in the middle and a not as bright highlight to the side. Mm -hmm. So it also kind of counteracts the the darker sides of the shield. Yeah. And again, that just characterizes uh, behavior of metal. The loaded brush. Yep. So base color plus white in the tip. Yeah. There's little little subtle nuances, and again, if you're a member of the Painting Buddha Academy, you've uh, heard this many times and you've seen this in much more detail. But um, uh, even the handling of the brush with a loaded brush is uh, sometimes a little mis more mysterious than you might think. So if you uh, are interested in this technique, and I'm pretty sure that a lot of people will be interested in this technique, um, and you watch this video again, uh, you might, for example, notice that um, Ben starts on one area. It's white. Uh, and then it turns into the base color and then he turns the brush around like by 180 degrees and it's white again because on the back side of the brush uh, there's still a little white left over and um, so these subtle nuances that uh, if you catch them and um, are aware of them will actually help you to master this technique picking up the technique is easy mastering it is a little little practice <laughs> See, I placed the white there and then just quickly cleaned the brush to soften out the one side there. A little bit more of the scrofulous brown because it's not as yellow as other parts of the armor. I think um, painting non-metallic metals is uh, uh, the second best thing to painting weathering effects. <laughs> I love weathering, like hardcore weathering on tanks and something like that. I just, I just could watch videos like that all day long and dream of doing it myself. <laughs> but um, I think uh, non-metallic gold is, is the second thing. It's like if, if you really pick this up, uh, not just gold, but the metals in general, if you pick this up and you get a really good result, it's just... It's just just a great feeling. And it looks good. And the thing is, once you know how to paint non-metallic gold, then you also know how to paint true metals. Because uh, a lot of the approach on true metals is the same uh, that you do with uh, non-metallic golds. Yeah, you always have to be aware of where you place the lights. Mm -hmm. So still a bit more yellow. Yeah, it already looks nice, but it's not the same gold, is it? Yeah. So just increasing the saturation now with a couple of glazes of yeah. that, uh, what's it called, scrupulous yellow? <laughs> scrupulous brown, yeah. Or brown, yeah. And um, just kind of, you can repeat this as long uh, until you re receive the desired effect. Yeah, we have to keep in mind there will also be some uh, tank brown uh, here in that area later mm -hmm. on, so that will also change the hue of the color. 
I think it's it's okay until they until we work in with the new typo. Um I used the tag brown also to get these here nice and dark. Things you also find on a lot of uh, people that try um, non-metals for the first time is that the amount of of dark, uh, of black, or in this case, really dark uh, brown, is not big enough. <clears throat> that it's uh, overall a little too bright. Yeah, you really need to go for a strong contrast, and you cannot have contrast without dark color. So, getting the the right level of shadow color is quite important. And the second thing you see on all of the gold is that the, the absolute highlight color, in this case white, is a very, very tiny spots. And that's what we mean with um, short blending distances, where you have uh, um, the transition from one color to the other is pretty abrupt. It's smooth, but it's pretty abrupt. And then, uh, like in the highlights areas, you just have extremely small highlights. That's really very characteristic of a sparkly metal. This looks nice. I like it. Me too. So I think it's time to um, put it on the figure and see if we need a little tweaking of the color of the gold. Mm -hmm. All right, I can't wait. All right. All right. Yeah, that's um, that's pretty epic. Beautiful. Um, one thing uh, I dislike, but. Uh, I think it, it matches quite well all together. Also, the gold tone looks just perfect to me. Mm -hmm. um, I still want to um, push the highlight here on yeah. on that rim so yeah. it matches the other strong highlights of the uh, more horizontal. Yeah, I was, I was wondering about that when you painted it. Yeah, I wasn't sure how, to, uh, how it will actually be positioned in the end. So, 100%. Uh, I mean, I was, I was sure it was positioned like that, but uh, yeah. the... the 100% of the angle, and yeah, that should be consistent. That was ivory. Uh, yeah, well, it was mixed, uh, not pure white, but... Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. It might look a bit too pale now, but it's uh, not a problem, as one thin glaze with the scrofulous brown to the sides will change that immediately. Yeah. I knew you would do that, that's why I didn't mention it. See the last last little touches is always something you can do when the miniature is complete. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Great success, I like. 
All right, so um, yeah, we'll be back in a second for um, the base figure and all its beauty. The base figure, yeah, but right now the base sucks a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a nice little blue tech base, but uh, <laughs> we'll come up with uh, something more fancy. All right, cool. All right. Yeah, so um, that is quite epic, I have to say. Now, of course, the base, we only uh, use that for showing it now. It's a lot, much too large for this miniature. Yeah, but, the, the, uh, the black socket, yeah, it's just to so going to have a good grip on that. Well, I showed it into the cam. Um, so how happy on a scale of 1 to 10 are you? Uh, I would say uh, 9. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, al there's always one on, on top for that's true. Su surprises. Yeah, But uh, we've, we have not talked about something yet. We have uh, been very, very lazy. Yeah, uh, we have to, <laughs> to, to be honest with you guys, we are a bunch of lazy dudes here. <laughs> we've just uh, stolen the base out of the painting Buddha cabinet. Um, it's one of the bases that we've created for our awesome uh, base building DVD. Basing Alchemy Volume 1 Earth. Yeah. Yes. So, so if you want to know yeah. how, uh, how you create a nice desert like gaming base like these, or uh, at least two different, uh, different other bases, one is for an insert base for an army display, and the other one is a show base, yeah. uh, we have all that on the DVD. But uh, we thought it might be a little too long to have that also here in the yeah. in the online video. Plus, it's warm and we're lazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, and, True story. And, and seriously, the the uh, Basing Alchemy uh, um, Earth uh, DVD set. It's uh, actually three DVDs. We also have it as an online video. It's nine hours of instructions on how to make bases like this. Now, this is the most basic base yeah. uh, that we have done, um, and. Um, yeah, we have the, the uh, we have uh, both Ben uh, and Matt Sexbush. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt is also Slayer sword winner. Uh, these guys know what they're doing when it comes to bases, and uh, uh, I always say that that is actually a DVD that not only good painters need; it's really somebody some uh, something that also um, gamers need, just to make some really cool and simple bases that look awesome. Yeah, so he yeah, was... luckily it uh, fits with the color. Yeah, he looks really good on on that. Uh... It's always dangerous actually to have like uh, gold and beige and especially non-metal mm. uh, in a large amount. But uh, as the, the color and the contrast of the, the base is quite different to the one that we achieved on the gold, yeah. that works really nice together. Yeah. Also the, the light yellow here and the blue is a nice contrast. Yeah, I think so too. So we got a little lucky that uh, that exactly fit. Uh, plus it's a fantasy base. Yes. Because... Yeah. Contrary to popular belief, this is a fantasy miniature. It is not a space marine. <laughs> it's a sick marine. <laughs> no, but uh, but uh, maybe to close this out, um, this is a video that we're... The, the format of the video is um, a little shorter than, than what we usually do. Uh, we spent a little more than eight hours on this. I'd say we probably spent about ten hours mm -hmm. on this miniature now uh, because we always do a little more than we need to. <laughs> But um, um, we have more videos like these in the Painting Buddha Academy. There's going to be 14 videos like these uh, from um, short versions like this one to really long and epic versions like the Shield Maiden, for example, or the Horus Heresy uh, that we did. The uh, Horus one. Yeah, yeah the Horus one, uh, for example, and many, many other miniature projects. And if you see the price of these 14 videos that you will receive, you will go insane because it's only 42 euros for all of them, not for one, for all Yay. of them. Yay! So check that out. Um, but there's other ways to uh, help us as well and to support us. That is by, first of all, liking this video. It's a free video. What's not to like, <laughs> right? Um, so if you hate the rules, don't say dislike just because you hate the rules. Um, I think the rules are actually fun. But uh, and don't don't dislike me for saying that either, right? <laughs> but uh, no, if you like this video, um, um, subscribe. Um, there's going to be a lot of more content coming up, um, especially on the YouTube channel uh, very soon. Um, and um, share and enjoy. That's Definitely. our other motto. It's uh, tell your friends about it. Um, come to our Facebook page uh, like that, um, and see what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. All right, perfect. Yeah. So could we, if people really like this video, Ben? Do you think uh, they could coerce you into painting one of the Chaos Guys maybe next month? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. All right. Well, let, let's try, people. So <laughs> share and enjoy to force Ben to do a Chaos Guy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks for watching.